so welcome you all in our uh, today's uh, regular uh, re regular uh, virtual weekly stay me what we could say uh, this this in this episode we are going to cover the gastrointestinal malignancy our today's topics uh, role of new adjuvant adjuvant what we could say mainly we will focus on radiation therapy in gastroesophageal junction and stomach cancer Uh, so as our uh, schedule program, at first we will start with a poll question. I would like to request uh, Ms. Sharna to please uh, post this poll for our audience. Sure. Sir. So I would like to request every participants to answer in this poll question. This is not a question. This is a uh one type of uh, what you could say that we want to know what the type of approach in our uh, today's participants regarding uh, advanced gi malignancies it's a sport just a sport sir nothing else this sports it's a brainstorming nothing else yes yes <laughs> So, Sharna, please proceed to the next question. thank you thank you sharna so th thank you all uh, as you know today our speaker dr shaida alom associate professor of radiation oncology uh, national institute of cancer research and institute and beside her we have two overseas faculties uh, dr uh, jong cheng chu uh, who is a radiation oncologist working in shanghai cancer center and besides uh, we have another uh, overseas faculties from the same cancer institute shanghai cancer center dr wang yang both of them are specialized in uh, gastroesophageal dr ju is specialized in gastroesophageal junction uh, junctional cancer is more fo main focus of interest is esophageal cancers and you can you can find a, a number of publications in red journal and dr wang yang uh, she is mainly focused in gastric malignancy so that's why both of them are here so thank you here for joining both of you now without any delay i would like to request our today's faculty dr shaida alam to proceed with his with her presentation dr shaida alam okay thank you so much shumon uh, assalamu alaikum and uh, good afternoon to all uh, then uh, my profound thanks to the organizer for giving me this opportunity to present here so now i am sharing my slides okay So uh, can you see my slide Shumon? Yes, yes, yes. And so today um I'm going to talk on new and adjuvant therapy for localized gastric and junctional cancers roles of radiotherapy adaptive strategies utilizing early beta assessment that has given to me. So my my slides is not moving okay so 
So this is the outline of my presentation. So before we get started, I want to make a point clear that uh, from the title and from here, uh, you, can, you are seeing uh, the terminology that is radiation, uh, radiotherapy, uh, but uh, you will find the term uh, chemo radiation in state of radiotherapy and all the evidences and recommendation that I will present in my presentation. Uh, because chemotherapy has been validated in the new adjuvant and adjuvant setting in the gastric and junctional adenocarcinomas by a number of studies, and now it is the standard of care. But all the uh, cities uh, of uh, radiation using adjuvant or new adjuvant setting failed to show any survival advantage, though there were uh, improvement in the local control. So now all the studies, they are incorporating this radiation with the standard of care radio or chemotherapy to get a better response. So what's the goal of radiotherapy in junctional and gastric cancer? Historically, surgery remains the primary curative modality for gastric and junctional adenocarcinoma. But if we uh, look at this data, we can see that about 54% of patients, they develop local regional recurrence and about 25% of patients, distant failure occur and about 88% of patients, both local regional and distal failure develop. So these statistics demand the need for addition of further treatment uh, like chemotherapy and radiotherapy with surgery in the form of adjuvant or new adjuvant treatment. So the main goal of radiotherapy in junctional and gastric cancer are downstage the tumor to increase R0 resection rate, decrease local regional recurrence, and ultimately improve the overall survival. So the question remains, does it work? And the good news is that it works and it moderately improves the overall survival about 10% uh, on five years, and that, that um, of course, in an appropriately selected patient. So we can give this chemo radiation preoperatively or postoperatively. So let's see what's the advantages of giving chemo radiotherapy as a new adjuvant. So the potential advantages are it enhances resectability, assess response in primary tumor, it improves local control treat micrometastasis early, and it is better tolerated than postoperative treatment because the radiation port is much more smaller in preoperative setting. But there are some disadvantages also because it may, uh, the staging may less educate, uh, adequately assessed. Uh, there is a chance of increased postoperative morbidity. And of course, there is always chance of disease progression during new adjuvant treatment. So let's see what the guideline recommends. So according to the NCCN guideline 2021 gastric chapter, in any clinical T2 or higher and any N tumor, the patient who are medically fit and potentially resectable, preoperative chemo radiation is a category 2B recommendation. That is, the recommendation is based on low level of evidence and not all the panel members agreed for that. And for medically fit but surgically unresectable patient, chemoradiation is an option followed by assessment of surgery. Regarding the gastroesophageal junctional adenocarcinoma, uh, any clinically T2N0 with high risk feature like lymphovascular invasion, tumor more than three centimeter in size or poorly differentiated tumor, or any N plus disease that is not positive disease or T3 or T4 tumor, uh, the uh, guideline recommends preoperative chemoradiation that is a category one evidence. So what are the trials or evidences that support this recommendation? There are so many trials, uh, I will not go through the all, but some uh, very uh, important trials like CROSS trial, POET trial, Top Gear, and Critic 2 trial. CROSS and POET is basically for esophageal carcinoma, and Top Gear and Critic trial, they included the uh, gastric cancer as well as gastroesophageal adenocarcinoma. 
So this is a very famous cross trial, uh, which is a randomized phase three tri trial with 366 patients. Uh, they included a stage two or a stage three disease. 75% uh, were adenocarcinoma and 24% uh, of patients were gastroesophageal junctional cancer. And the primary objective was overall survival. And they randomized the patient between two groups. Uh, one is surgery alone, and another is concurrent new adjuvant concurrent chemo radiation followed by surgery. So it was a positive trial, and uh, after this trial, the standard of care for esophageal cancer has been changed to new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery. Uh, in this trial, you can clearly see that the, there is a complete pathological response rate of 29%, but the uh, best benefit was uh, observed in for a square missile carcinoma, that was 49%. So five-year overall survival was 47% for chemo radiation group, and progression-free survival was 44% for chemo radiation group. And this study also showed reduced local regional and distant progression. So the another trial for esophageal new adjuvant therapy is POET trial, which is also a phase three randomized trial of uh, with uh, 126 patients. And they include all the adenocarcinoma of uh, gastroesophageal junction. And the primary objective was uh, overall survival. Uh, this study was uh, uh, stopped early due to poor accurate, but the three-year overall survival, that is 27%, and and path CR rate, which is 15.6%, and N0 rate favored chemoradiotherapy over surgery alone. So now uh, uh, I'm talking about the top gear trial, uh, which is looking at the um, benefit of chemo, new adjuvant chemoradiotherapy in gastric and junctional cancer. And the rationale behind it, if we look at the trials of rectal and esophageal cancer, where the new adjuvant chemoradiation have improved the surgical and treatment-related outcome. So new adjuvant chemoradiation could be a rational approach to investigate in gastric cancer. So the Top Gear trial, they uh, included uh, the patient uh, of adenocarcinoma gastric and GE junction tumor. And they are uh, currently recruiting patients. This is an ongoing trial. So their first phase two result published and the primary endpoint that is five year overall survival is still waiting. Uh, and the schema of this um, trial is they randomized the patient into two groups. One group is uh, chemotherapy followed by surgery and again adjuvant chemotherapy that is perioperative chemotherapy therapy and another group is new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by chemoradiation followed by surgery and that th this study demonstrated that new adjuvant chemoradiation can be safely delivered to the majority of the patient without significant increase in treatment toxicity or surgical morbidity and their waste data is still waiting so another study that um, uh, look at the new adjuvant uh, Chemoradiation for gastric cancer is critic too. Uh, they, they also currently recruiting patients. It's a phase two study with 207 patients, and they include all the gastric and G junction adenocarcinoma. And they randomized the patient in three groups. That is one only preoperative chemotherapy followed by surgery. The second group preoperative chemotherapy followed by chemoradiation followed by surgery. And the third group chemo preoperative chemoradiation followed by surgery. So their result is still waiting. So now come to the adjuvant setting. So the according to the NCCN guideline version 2021 and uh, gastric chapter, uh, the adjuvant uh, chemoradiation is recommended after a R0 resection for a patient of pathological N0 with some high risk factor and for two might pathologically T3 or T4, any N or any N plus disease, uh, it is a category one recommendation of adjuvant uh, concurrent chemoradiation. And for R1 and R0 resection, that is R1 means microscopic disease uh, in the margin, and R2 means macroscopic disease in the margin, the recommended treatment is adjuvant chemoradiation. And for a junctional cancer, after a R0 resection uh, for a PT2 pathologically T2 tumor, uh, 
uh, tuberin chemoradiation is a category 2B recommendation, but for PT3 or uh, T4 or a node positive disease, chemoradiotherapy is the treatment of choice. And for R1 and R2 resection, chemoradiation adjuvant is also a recommended treatment. So these are the few trials that support that this recommendation. So one is very famous, uh, SWAG 9008 or intergroup 0116 trial, which is a US-based trial. And then artist trial, Korean trial, this artist, artist two and critics trial. Let's see the SWAG 9008 trial. So it is um, uh, uh, for uh, gastric adenocarcinoma, it is a very important trial, uh, which randomized the patient after the resection uh, uh, and the stage was uh, stage 1B to 4 and M0 patient, all are gastric adenocarcinoma. Uh, so after resection, they randomized the patient either observation alone or 5 few leukoporin chemo uh, chemotherapy with radiation of 45 gray in one 0.8 gray perfection. 556 patients were recruited, uh, among which 80% were gastric carcinoma and 20% was G junction cancer. So definitely it was a positive trial. You can clearly see that there is a 11% more improvement in median disease-free survival in concurrent chemoradiation plus surgery group and in 3% uh, three year survival there's 10% difference and median survival there is about 9 months difference so what we have learned so far from this study it uh, concurrent uh, adjuvant concurrent chemoradiation significantly improved in overall and disease free survival and the biggest impact in decreasing the local recurrence, which is 29% uh, to 19%, but the diffuse and HER2 positive cancers did not benefit. But there are there was some limitation of this study. Only 10% had a D2 resection and 54% patient had less than a D1 resection. That means most of the patient, about uh, um, half of the patient were uh, um, not optimally resected. So from this uh, uh, study, we can in, uh, um, interpret that adjuvant chemoradiation is a standard of care for gastric cancer in less than a D1 resection and positive resection margin, not for all. And then the question comes, is there any benefit of adjuvant chemoradiation after a D2 resection? So this question was better addressed by this Korean artist trial which is a randomized phase three trial with 458 patients. And they uh, included uh, adenocarc gastric adenocarcinoma. And uh, there are two arm um, study. Uh, one study after a D2 resection of surgery, they randomized the patient uh, to two cycles of chemotherapy, then chemoradiation, and again chemotherapy. In another group, after surgery, they just gave them chemotherapy. So the artist trial uh, is a negative trial. There is no benefit of adjuvant chemoradiotherapy after the D2 resection, but maybe in subgroup analysis, it has been shown that maybe some a modest benefit in, in case of intestinal and node positive patient. That is the three years disease-free survival was 76 versus 72% in node positive patient. So the second question comes, is there any benefit of adjuvant chemoradiation after a D2 resection in a node positive patient, uh, which was seen in a, in a very modest amount in artist, uh, artist trial. So the artist two trial looked at this um, question and they answered that they randomized only the node positive patient after the D2 surgery to chemotherapy followed by chemoradiation and chemotherapy or only chemotherapy. And from this uh, um, graph, you say, uh, clearly see that it, is, it was also a negative trial. There is no benefit of adding chemoradiation uh, in, uh, after the D2 resection and a node positive patient. 
So the another question is, does adding chemo radiation to perioperative chemotherapy improve outcome? That means if the patient got a new adjuvant chemotherapy and then undergo surgery, is there any benefit of uh, giving them uh, adjuvant chemo radiation? So this uh, question was better best addressed by this critic trial. They randomized the patient uh, uh, in two groups, preoperative chemotherapy followed by surgery, followed by postoperative chemotherapy. And in another group, preoperative chemotherapy followed by surgery, followed by chemo radiation, adjuvant chemo radiation. And this is also, this was also a negative study. There was no survival benefit adding adjuvant chemo radiation with perioperative chemotherapy. And now a few words uh, regarding the radiotherapy techniques. So uh, the first, it starts with the data acquisition, that is the patient position and immobilization. Uh, patient is simulated supine with hands above the head, vac lock, wing board, wing, uh, wing board, alpha cradle may be used for immobilization and setup consistency. Uh, fasting for more than two hours before simulation as well as treatment is recommended by some authors. CT simulation is the standard of care. Administration of oral and IV contrast may aid target localization. CT slices five to three to five mm thick are obtained from carina to the iliac crest. Respiratory grating or breath holding techniques may help reducing target motion with respiration. And 4D CT may be appropriate to assess respiratory or tumor motion. So regarding the target uh, volume definition, my apologies that, that uh, I, I just made it too short and I will just uh, quickly run through it because it's a huge thing. Uh, it will take another session to describe all the thing. You will find all these um, delineating guidelines in any standard book. So for G-junction tumor, uh, for new adjuvant radiation therapy, GTB, uh, it should be the main bulk of disease that is the primary and involved regional nodes that is identified by planning and diagnostic CT, uh, endoscopic ultrasound, endoscopy, and or PET CT. And CTB primary, it should be GTB plus one centimeter radial and three to four centimeters superior or inferior margin along esophagus and cardia. Sometimes we have to limit the radial border to 0.5 cm if abuting uninvolved heart, liver, or vertebral bodies. CTB for the involved nodes included includes 0.5 to 1.5 centimeter margin, and CTB for elective nodes included uh, paraesophageal, celiac, paraotic, and gastrohepatic nodes with coverage extending to the celiac axis. Some evidences said that uh, including uh, elective nodal irradiation uh, improve the survival rate. So the PT and PTB includes 0.5 to 1 cm expansion, ex expansion from the CTB. In case of gastric cancer, uh, adjuvant RT is quite challenging. We have to take the uh, uh, data or the lo uh, localization of our target by using pre-op CT post-op CT, paid CT, surgical clips, operative details, pathology report, and upper GI studies to guide the target volumes. General target volume depends on the location of the tumor. It, uh, according to the location, it completely changed and stage of the disease, surgical margin status, location, and involvement of regional lymph nodes. Uh, generally, initial tumor bed remaining stomach, anastomotic site, residual disease, and adjacent structures are usually the target. Because the initial tumor bed is the most common site of local recurrence, about 50%, and about 40% patient uh, recur in the nodes. And in the anastomotic site, it is about 25%. And the regional lymph node inclusion depends on the location and gene stays, and perigastic, celiac, portohepatic, splenic, distal paraesophageal lymph nodes are usually considered. Nodal CTB include 5 mm margin around corresponding vessels. Uh, we have to consider the ITB because there's a large organ motion here. So 1.5 centimeter in all direction and PTB uh, from ITB, uh, we should take a three, four, five, 5 mm 3D margin. So regarding the dose prescription, uh, in case of pre-op setting, 
Uh, it is 41.4 to 50.4 in 1.8 gray per fraction. And in post-operative case, it is 45 to 50.4 uh, in 1.8 gray per fraction, depending on the margin status and presence of residual disease. 3D CRT should be the minimal standard of care, but IMRT should be used when a sparing of normal tissues cannot be achieved with the 3D planning. So these are the dose constraints, the spinal cord, lung, heart, liver, kidneys, and a small bowels. We should definitely honor uh, the dose limit of this structure according to the guideline. So there are complication of uh, pre or post-op chemo radiation, definitely. So acute complication is usually nausea, anorexia, fatigue, weight loss, myelosuppression due for chemotherapy, using chemotherapy concurrently. And for uh, G-junction tumor, there's chance of esophagitis, esophageal perforation, and pneumonitis. And there, there are some late complication also, that is this uh, pepsia, radiation gastritis and uh, ulcers, stricture and pericarditis. So always we should take some special precaution to avoid this um, uh, complication. Uh, we should ensure adequate nutrition prior to radiation. At least 1500 calorie per day, a nutrition consultation should be taken. Uh, patient may require a feeding tube before uh, commencing the treatment. And for some patient, H2 blocker or protopan inhibitor, inhibitor should be used for ulcer prophylaxis. Uh, on Rinsetron, eight milligram one hour before RT for severe nausea and vomiting, and uh, you can give it uh, eight hourly uh, throughout the treatment. And if the patient lose more than 10% of body weight during the therapy, a repeat CT planning should be considered. Now I will shed some light to the uh, newer concept of uh, investigation and research that is the functional imaging for esophageogastric cancer. The concept is uh, that the uh, for uh, changing and the chemotherapy the, the treatment protocol for early pet non-responder uh, to either the change schedule of chemotherapy or adding chemo radiation may improve the outcome. So there are uh, uh, lots of study are looking at this uh, concept now. Some of them are Unicorn, CLGB08083, Doctor Study, Scope 2, and Gastropet. And this concept is quite newer to me also. Uh, I would love to hear uh, 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 regarding this in details from our uh, foreign faculty. And uh, I'm just uh, highlighting one of the study that is the doctor study, uh, uh, where the schema of this study was like this. They, uh, first, the uh, 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 page CT was done for a patient, and then the patient received one cycle of chemotherapy with cisplatin and 5-EFU, and after that, another page CT was done. So the patient was uh, grouped in two, uh, two groups. Uh, one is metabolic responder and one is metabolic non-responder. So the metabolic resp uh, responder patient continue with the same chemotherapy protocol and then go for surgery. And the metabolic non-responder patient, they are randomized into two arms. One is uh, uh, chemotherapy with change schedule, that is DCF, and another arm, two cycle of DCF, then radiotherapy. And then the patient is um, go for surgery. So the primary endpoint was histopathological response. So if we look at the result, and then after this, um, the primary endpoint that is major histological response in case of patient with who uh, got chemo radiation, the histological response is about 63%. Uh, which was 20% 20, 20 for chemotherapy arm and 7% in metabolic response. Arm. So it's a very meaningful response. They also looked at the second, some secondary endpoint like three years local recurrence. Uh, here, here uh, this is also a very effective result uh, they, uh, they got. That is uh, after the chemo radiation, and the uh, local recurrence was 11% which was 32% after chemotherapy. Yes. And another uh, uh, secondary endpoint were three-year progression-free survival, which also improved in uh, chemoradiation yes. arm. That is 46% of patients uh, uh, had uh, three years progression-free survival, uh, which is compared uh, with this uh, chemotherapy, that was 29%. 
And five-year overall survival, the, or another secondary endpoint, uh, the patient who received uh, chemo radiation, the, the five years overall survival was 46%, whereas uh, it was 31% uh, after the two cycles of DCF and 53% in metabolic responders. So from this study, we can see that there's very meaningful and very interesting and encouraging results of this early PET assessment. And based on this, uh, for the non PET non-responder, if we change the treatment protocol to the uh, primary chemotherapy to either the change schedule of chemotherapy, or if we add radiotherapy to a non-responder, we'll get a meaningful response to this patient. So it is a new area of uh, research. And um, so uh, I'm coming uh, almost at the end. So I have some take home messages uh, regarding that new adjuvant chemo radiation. So for junctional cancer, yes, it's a category one recommendation and it is supported by the cross and point trial. For gastric cancer, there is lacking of robust data. It is still a category 2B recommendation. And there are some ongoing trials like Top Gear, Critic 2. We have to wait for their result. And regarding the adjuvant chemo radiation, it totally depends on the extent of surgery. Uh, it is uh, indicated for a patient with less than a D2 resection and a positive margin patient, that is R1 or R2 resection. And from some study, we have learned that adjuvant RT improves outcome after D2 in N plus and in positive and intestinal tumor, though that was very modest. And RT does not add a survival benefit after the D2 resection and N0 node. Guidelines for target delineation and OAR with dose constraint should be implemented for planning and uh, everywhere. Advanced radiotherapy delivery techniques, including IMRT, image guidance, and motion management should be considered. And response imaging for tailoring treatment is an ongoing research. We have to wait for the result. So this is uh, uh, the slide courtesy. I have taken some slides from the small presentation. And thank you, everyone, for your kind attention and for being with me. Thank you so much. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shahida Alum Limapa for covering uh, every aspects, uh, the topics you have given for. Uh, so we have many points to discuss, uh, but before that, I would like to take comments from our overseas faculties. Uh, at first, I would like to request Dr. Zhu for, uh, for giving his opinion regarding this presentation. Dr. Zhu. Uh, hello, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sume, and uh, thank you, Dr. Alam. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very glad to join this uh, the, this conversation with uh, experts from Bangladesh, and we're very, very happy to see what is happening uh, for the research in Bangladesh. And I think that it's a very interesting topic for me. For me, I usually do the esophageal cancer research, and now I see there's many um, how to say bulky part of the esophageal cancer gastric cancer and that is the junction cancer. There are many controversies how we can treat the junction cancer, why, whether it is uh, esophageal cancer or it's gastric cancer. But I see from your PPT and presentation, I get more knowledge and uh, that is very beneficial to me. And I would like to uh, have the conversation and have the discussion with all the experts and students from Bangladesh. Thank you, Dr. Allen. Welcome. So thank you, Dr. Zhu. Now I would like to request Dr. Uh, Dr. Yang to give her opinion regarding this presentation. And if you have anything to input, please proceed. Hello? Hello, yes, Hello. we can hear you. Uh, yeah. oh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mustafa, for allowing me to discuss in this webinar. Uh, new, uh, new adjuvant therapy seems to be a trend in GI cancer. Uh, especially in rectal and esophageal cancer. Uh, multiple clinical trials uh, evaluating the preoperative uh, chemoradiotherapy uh, have showed its advantages in terms of tumor regression, uh, survival, and toleration in locally advanced gastric cancer. Uh, however, 
Only in less than 20% patients uh, reach PCR even underwent new adjuvant chemoradiation. Uh, therefore, uh, patient selection may be a key issue. And apart from uh, clinical, pathological, and molecular features, a uh, PET response may be a new direction for uh, selecting patients. Uh, with regard to the adjuvant radiotherapy for locally advanced gastric cancer, uh, obviously we are facing a dilemma. Uh, the indication is increasingly narrow, uh, especially in the area of the artist 2 study, as Dr. Shahida mentioned in, his, uh, in her presentation. Uh, in Shanghai Cancer Center, uh, we get a few references and I would put them into three categories. Uh, one is positive surgical margin, uh, as mentioned. I think that is the most clear uh, indication. The second category uh, would be patients who have inefficient nodal dissection, that patients who have D0 or D1 dissection. Uh, the third category I think is the most controversial, uh, that is patients who have large tumor burden and a high risk of uh, local regional recurrence like N2 or N3. Uh, this part of patient is the uh, most important that, and I also want to hear opinions from you. Moreover, in the past years, we have witnessed great breakthroughs in, in Immuno immunotherapy for gastric cancer, uh, especially with the success of Checkmate 649 and a Checkmate 4 trial. The benefits of combination of uh, immunotherapy and radiotherapy have been demonstrated in preclinical pre research and a clinical study of other type of uh, cancer like uh, lung cancer. Therefore, the combination of radiotherapy and immunotherapy may be a new and a promising direction in adjuvant therapy or even metastatic gastric cancer. Uh, radiation may not be a local therapy, but also a key component of systemic therapy. Uh, we are undergoing a multi-center phase three study of chemotherapy with or without immunotherapy and chemotherapy chemo radiotherapy as adjuvant regimen for D2 receptive PN3 gastric cancer leading by our center in, is recurring. And we hope this study may help to promote the combination of radiotherapy uh, and immunotherapy into adjuvant phase in gastric cancer. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Wang, uh, for <clears throat> giving your inputs regarding the combination immunotherapy and radiation therapy. That is a newer concept in uh, gastric and uh, esophageal malignancy. So we have many things to discuss. Uh, I have seen some question. I will come later with this question. At first, Dr. Shahid Alam, you have seen uh, that I have posted in the poll uh, that a patient locally advanced stomach cancer, uh, usually we are very familiar uh, for this type of patient in our routine practice. So what would be your pick? So there are three options you could see that surgery after adjuvant therapy and perioperative chemotherapy and adjuvant CTRT. So what would be your pick? So um, till now, according to the evidences, perioperative chemotherapy is the standard of care. And for gastric cancer, uh, you have seen uh, in the NCCN guideline for a locally advanced disease, it's a level, a level 2B recommendation of uh, adjuvant chemoradiation. So uh, still the standard of care is perioperative chemotherapy, that is chemotherapy followed by surgery, four cycle of chemotherapy, usually with flawed regimen, and then surgery followed by four cycles of flawed regimen chemotherapy. And chemoradiation so, is a level 2B recommendation. So thank you. Uh, so both the foreign faculties are agreed with, the, with her opinion. Dr. Wang, Dr. Zhu, are you agreed? And okay. you can add the adjuvant chemoradiation if there is less than a D2 resection or a positive margin. These are the indications. Okay. So, uh, so I am coming. I mean, I am coming to that that the, that the question. You know, in Bangladesh, we are not very familiar with D2 resection. So, in general, you can expect a D1 or D0 resection most most of the time. So in that scenario, because we are not in the real world, we need to discuss with the day-to-day uh, day, uh, day day practice. So in this real world situation in Bangladesh, when we are frequently seeing the D0 resection, D1 resection, so what would be your decision then? So to be honest, uh, if you consider that uh, the, there's a suboptimal resection that is either D0 or D1, uh, by default, all patients should receive adjuvant chemoradiation. 
because this uh, the guidelines says this improved the local control about 10% and overall survival of about 10% at five years. So the evidence support, especially the SWAG uh, trial, uh, which is the practice changing trial. According to this, all of our patients should get adjuvant chemo -litation. Okay, so the uh, so the message is uh, that if you if we don't get the D two dissection, and uh, then we can consider about this uh, chemo radiation therapy. Chemo radiation therapy. So okay, uh, Doctor Wang, what we are really discussing uh, that in Bangladesh uh, we are not very familiar with D two dissection. Here the uh, usual dissection is D zero or D one dissection. So in this type of situation, suppose a D zero dissection, a clear margin, a node might be zero or might be positive. Do you think that we should routinely practice radiation therapy? Yes, uh, the standard of care is received a D2 dissection. And uh, if we, uh, when the surgical uh, quality is not enough, which patient received a D0 or D1, uh, of, obviously we have to uh, uh, underwent uh, operatively uh, chemo radiotherapy. And the uh, dose of the uh, GD, uh, PDV may uh, up to 50.4 gray. And we always, always uh, have more uh, dose and uh, the uh, strength of chemo radiotherapy. Okay. And in such so cases, just... Shumon, I think you, uh, you should have the 3D CRT facilities. Otherwise, if you use the 2D uh, treatment uh, for an adjuvant, uh, it will increase the toxicity. 2D is not a uh, very uh, recommended uh, adjuvant. Uh, Limapa, I, 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 I am coming to, I'm coming to that, uh, that issue uh, just, a, just a minute later. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Wang, uh, you have a uh, believer of higher dose because as you see the post-radiation therapy in all trials that the uh, <coughs> uh, critics trial, uh, that the critics, what I am talking about the critics and artist trial, both of them are 45 to 41 gray. Even the intergroup 0116, they also tried the 41 gray. Here you are trying to 50 gray. So is there any reason behind this? Uh, you mean the dose of the... Uh, in adjuvant radiation therapy. In adjuvant, yeah. Uh, in adjuvant zero uh, chemo radiotherapy, we usually use 54, uh, 50, uh, uh, 45 uh, gray of uh, in patient who underwent D2 dissection, but if the positive, uh, we have positive surgical uh, margin, we, we enhance the dose to 50.4 gray uh, to the margin, the positive margin, only to the positive margin. And in the other area, like the uh, regional area is always uh, 50, uh, six, uh, 45 gray. Okay. So you increase the dose only for gross positive. If the gross positive, that's you increase the dose up to 50 gray. Otherwise, it is 45. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay uh, so <clears throat> come to come to uh, Dr. Zhu. So regarding the gastroesophageal uh, gastroesophageal cancer. Uh, so what's your uh, recommendation for our do daily routine practice? Gastroesophageal uh, cancer. Gastro. You mean gastroesophageal junction cancer? Uh -huh. Yes, that's just the uh, yeah, mm, yeah, our center, the gastroesophageal junction cancer can be divided either treated as the esophageal cancer or the gastric cancer. So probably it, it's usually um, based on the pathology. Uh, for the esophageal cancer, it, at, uh, at least in China, there's more squamous cell carcinoma or esophageal cancer, but for the gastric cancer or junctional cancer, there can be more the adenocarcinoma. So if the depending on the location of the tumor as well as the uh, pathology, they may go to the, the general surgery department or the, or the gastric cancer radiotherapy department, uh, unit for the treatment, yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, what we have get from uh, our, our, our discussion the, the gastroesophageal junction after the cross or poet trial. So okay. the new adjuvant radiation therapy is a standard of practice, right, Srimapa? Yes. So in our routine practice, usually we don't use this practice. So should we change our practice uh, from today or from tomorrow? <laughs> so we should have all the um, 
facilities uh, and the infrastructure support for uh, changing our practice because most of the time uh, we can't uh, give the patient in the immediate date for radiation. So uh, for this, we usually practice uh, only the new adjuvant chemotherapy then followed by surgery. But if you look at this, uh, the evidences from this cross trial and for trial, uh, it should be a rational practice to give this patient uh, who are candidate for a, a new adjuvant chemoradiation because there is a, obviously there uh, is a, a benefit in overall survival, disease free survival, pathological complete response trials. So we should, uh, and uh, slowly, slowly, we should change our practice. We can't do it just uh, from today, tomorrow, but uh, we should have this mindset up and uh, we'll try for that. Uh, may I That's have a very question? good message. May I have yes, a question? Yes, sure. uh, for Dr. Uh, Alan, do you follow more the cross trial or more the POET trial in junctional cancer? <laughs> You can uh, to, be honest, <laughs> to be honest, I'm working in a government hospital and I can't um, afford to practice any one of them, most of the cases. Uh, so. But if I can, I, uh, I should uh, go for this cross trial. Okay, so you, actually, you um, you have uh, less opportunity to follow either the point <laughs> or cross trial, right? right? Yeah. If I'm a, so, yeah. do you do the post operative management yeah. such as adjuvant radiotherapy or chemo radiotherapy or chemotherapy? Most likely, yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, I have seen a few questions in the chat box. Uh, at first, I would like to request Dr. Altafusan Riyadh to ask his question directly to uh, Dr. Shahid Alam. Dr. Altafusan. Dr. Shahid or uh, foreign faculties. I think we should take the chance okay, to okay. ask them <laughs> and to get no problem, more and no more problem. from them. No, no, we, 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 okay, can, okay. we, we will Anyone. start jointly. Anyone, okay. Dr. Riyadh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes. you, you can ask your question directly. Thank you, sir. And madam, thank you for your nice presentation. So my question is regarding gastroesophageal junction tumor, you have mentioned about more CTV margin in case of nodal rather than the gross tumor. So what is the reason behind it? In case of nodal than the gross tumor? No, the yes. in, in CTV you margin You have mentioned 1 to 1.5 centimeter and in case of gross tumor, it was 1 centimeter. Radial 1 margin. centimeter is the radial margin, yeah, but the uh, margin and superior inferior margin is 3 to 4 centimeter. The radial margin is not that because uh, uh, sometimes we have to edit because of this uh, a very close proximity to the lung, uh, to the heart, a liver, and uh, for this. But it is for uh, uh, radial margin is work. It does the main bulk of the disease. It is about one centimeter. And ma'am, in case of nodal margin, is one to one point five centimeter in all direction? In all direction, yes. Yes, for with the vessel, it is one to one point five centimeter. Okay. And that has Thank been you. written in the book. Yeah, evidence-based medicine. Riyad, I, I have seen you have another question in chat box. You can proceed with that question. Okay, sir. Thank you. Ma'am, my second question is regarding the, uh, do you think IMRT is a good option for gastric cancer regarding the organ size, change in the organ volume and organ motion? Definitely, definitely. You, If you have the option for IMRT, you should go for the IMRT because uh, here the uh, uh, organitaries uh, dose con uh, concern and it is a very moving organ and it is a very large field. So if you uh, uh, have to honor the organ of, of risk dose, you should go for IMRT rather than a 3D CRT. But if, so, as we, uh, please, yeah. ma'am, as IMRT, as stomach is a moving organ so is there any chance of geographical miss yeah for that uh, we recommend the 4d ct or this respiratory gating these are recommended because this is a very uh, mobile organ so ma'am imrt with igrt that is the yes i am I, yes that i have uh, uh, written in my take home message that the motion management is also very important uh, for radiation delivery okay thank you ma'am riyad, riyad you should keep it in mind that IMRT always should be with IGRT. So if there is no IGRT, you should not do the IMRT. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Dr. FM Kamaluddin, sir, you have some question in the chat box. Thanks, Suman. Uh, I have one question to Dr. Zhu. 
that uh, in G junction, we know that, as you said, that there are some we need to consider as esophageal, some to consider as uh, stomach. And that make a big difference of taking a decision. So, uh, well, a rule of thumb, squamous and adeno is the issue. Is there any other tools which can give us a clue that a classical G junction tumor, but I'm not sure, shall I consider it as a, uh, I mean, take a principle of treatment with esophageal or a gastric? Because it makes the whole difference. Then I'm coming to my next question. Hello, do you mean, do you ask that how can we divide a junction of cancer yeah, into yeah. gastric or yeah. esophageal cancer? Is that yeah. the question? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, there, I, I know that we, there are two definitions. One is by NCCN guidelines, and one is by the SWIFT. It's usually basically if the tumor is uh, two centimeters uh, below the the esophageal junction, and it is considered uh, it's, it's above is considered to be esophageal cancer, and they can be treated at the the esophageal cancer, and uh, otherwise they can be treated as a gastric cancer. We, uh, in our center, we follow that rule. But both, but basically, I, we have to say that uh, in our department, uh, we have for esophageal cancer, it's usually the squamous cell carcinoma. So when it comes to squamous cell carcinoma, they usually go to the thoracic unit for radiotherapy. And for the adenocarcinoma, especially in the junctional, they prefer to go the general tumor unit for the therapy. It's controversial, we, we admit that, yeah. So, uh, I mean, why I raised this question, Shumon, that NCCN is telling only the distance, the two centimeter is the secret. But in Shanghai, they are also considering the histology. When it is going to squamous, they are more preferring to go to esophageal type giving New adjuvant chemotherapy, but when it is an adeno, they are preferring to put it in the surgery. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just taking into yes. consideration, but it's not that the definition because basically it's more uh, based on the location rather than the histology. The fact is that uh, we most patients for esophageal cancer are squamous cell cancer. This is the fact, yeah. But it's not based on that. No, no, that's okay, okay, we got, we got the point. Histology for taking the consideration. So my next question was, when we see the PET CT uh, responsiveness, this is you know, we see that in most in the esophageal or GE junction, it is most recommended that after giving uh, new adjuvant, we need to do an assessment with PET CT. But this is not much said about the stomach. Is there any reason that why it is more advocated for G or esophageal, not for the stomach? Uh, uh, to, to ask me, uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, for esophageal cancer, they have the option or have the possibility to preserve the organ. So, they, for such a, there are many trials uh, in, in Netherlands and also in China. They are trying to get a organ preserve approach. So, they use the PET CT. They do the PET CT uh, response to see if they can omit the surgery, just do the chemo radiation. But for, for gastric cancer, they prefer, or the, the results show that the surgery may be the primary option. So there is more research in the passivity response in esophageal cancer rather than the gastric cancer. But I, I don't know whether, uh, how to say that, I'm not sure it is, probably they can also do that in gastric cancer, probably, but no but one like, does can that. I, can I add something here? Yes, Kamal. for me, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Kamal. So regarding the pet city uh, of the stomach, uh, it has been written in the book that, that this uh, FTG uptake is not that great for stomach cancer, especially uh, for diffuse and signaturing cells. So about 40% of cases, uh, that is signaturing, they can miss the primary lesion uh, in the stomach. I think that's why the, so for esophageal cancer, PET, PET is so important and not for, uh, for stomach cancer, it is not that. For a stomach cancer, it is mainly for, for, uh, for distant metastasis uh, in a, uh, when you are going for a radical treatment that time, for not the local uh, treatment assessment, local disease assessment. Thanks. Uh, so Dr. Wang, you, anything to add, Dr. Wang, regarding this aspect? Please unmute yourself. 
Uh, sorry. Uh, I think uh, yeah. pet response may be a new direction in in gastric cancer. Uh, to uh select a patient who is uh, sensitive to newer chemo radiotherapy. Uh, but actually we we don't have relevant study, and I I, I just say that's a new direction. What is the concurrent chemo, chemo radiation you use? Are you using 5-FU, cisplatin 5-FU or Zeloda for gastric cancer when you are giving can concurrent? Or only capsetabine, 5-FU leucoverin, no? Capsetabine or 5-FU leucoverin or cisplatin 5 Which one you are preferring, Dr. One? Dr. One. Um, uh, sorry, you mean the uh, PET CD or? Radiotherapy. Oh. For chemo radiotherapy in stomach cancer, which drug you are using in concurrent setup? Capacitive oh, or 5-FU liquiverine or cisplatin 5-FU? Oh, yeah. Uh, in the concurrent regimen, we uh, usually use the 5-FU five, uh, five, uh, uh, five based, uh, such as the S1 and the uh, Celoda. Okay. okay, so we have another question in the chat box. How should we define stomach bed in adsorbent RT? Dr. Wang, if surgical clips are, clips are not there, how we could define the stomach bed? Oh, oh sorry, I'm sorry, I can't hear hear the question. Can you pardon? Okay, uh, so in adjuvant uh, set uh, in adjuvant setting, how you can uh, contouring the stomach bed if you don't have the surgical clips? How to uh, define the area? Define the stomach uh, stomach bed. Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, we, we don't define the stomach back in adjuvant RTL. Okay. Yes, we only okay. uh, the. Uh, so what's what's your uh, clinical target volume after after resection? So in adjuvant adjuvant radiation therapy, what your clinical target volume? Uh, the two uh. Mm, the most important uh, area to. Uh, to include it in the PTV in adjuvant uh, radiotherapy, maybe the uh, I think maybe the most important is the regional uh, nodal, and uh, that is the most uh, common uh, reference pattern of uh, get ad ad local advanced gastric cancer. Uh, and the uh, the rate of failure of rec uh, local region or local uh, recurrence is uh, is uh, quite at least low. So therefore, okay. we don't define a stomach bed in adjuvant radiotherapy. It's a very interesting message. Yes. Let me share our experience. Initially, uh, me and Dr. Kamal Mai uh, planned a uh, post gastric to be adjuvant, and we co controlled the whole thing, and it comes out with 25 centimeter uh, area. <laughs> uh, so uh, that, that was the concept that to include all the stomach bed area. But, here you can get a very important message that an adsorbent treatment, stomach bed is not, is not your area of interest because the regional draining nodes is the area of uh, recurrence. So we need to treat that area with the adsorbent radiation therapy. Okay, Limapa. No, but uh, there's a 50% chance of local recurrence in the stomach bed. So is it not, is, is it not a target for uh, uh, adjuvant therapy? You can localize it if uh, from, from the surgical clip. So uh, our message should be uh, to our surgical colleagues that they should put the clips during the surgery. And if they don't put the uh, clips, then we can reconstruct that bed uh, from the pre-op CT, post-op CT, uh, the endoscopic examination, the histopathology. With all this, we can reconstruct a stomach bed, I think. Ahida, I think uh, the problem is in the 2D era, if you look at the uh, picture, the study picture, the big picture of Perez hand drawing, yes. you will see the big stomach bed, almost like a stomach. But what Dr. Wang was telling, now your target depends on your surgeon. Mm -hmm. whether, what is the location of the tumor? So if it is a G junction, proximal gastrectomy, then you need to take the respective regional nodes, what she is telling. And if you go to the pylorus, then you go to the cilia. But if it is a total gastrectomy, then you have nothing in the, in the field. There, you need to cover all the uh, um, regional nodes. And the funny thing is that if you cover all the nodes and you connect that, it becomes the stomach pain. So <laughs> it depends on where is the location, what is the surgery. And what she was telling, that the, our main target is not the pain, mm -hmm. but the regional nodes. And when you connect 
with one to another nodes, that region, automatic, that area of yeah, storm yeah. cover. So we don't need to kill ourselves to create, as Shuman was telling, in 2009, uh, we were trying to draw a stomach bed and it was such a big uh, field that we could not manage. So now in 2D, we need to do like that. And in 3D, you need to see the location, surgery, extent of nodal involvement, uh, risk area, Everything. cover that. Yes. Then when you cover the nodal re re region and you link it, it will take the relevant uh, stomach. Bed. That is how it is covered. So I have, I have a question to Dr. Wang. So uh, uh, during giving post-op uh, RT in the stomach, so how you are going to manage the nutrition? So whether you are going to NG tube or uh, 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 keep what we could say that gastrostomy tube, how we are going to manage? Sorry, you need to unmute yourself, Dr. Wang. Uh, you, you mean the, the motion control or breast control? No. No, nutrition, how you are going to manage the nutrition? Feeding. Nutrition and feeding, feeding management. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very practical Medical. problem we are facing. Uh, yeah, uh, of course, uh, definitely uh, the nutrition is the most, most important in the uh, therapy of chemo therapy, especially for GI cancer. Uh, for uh, gastric cancer, the patients always be uh, uh, voted and uh, uh, many uh, different uh, toxicity uh, affects their, uh, their, their digest. And uh, uh, we always give some, uh, some nutritional uh, functional or food to him or maybe someone um, when if they have uh, <clears throat> they have uh, not enough to fit, uh, to uh, this uh, the food uh, we always uh, put the uh, feed tube you know uh, to uh, enhance the nutrition okay uh, so uh, you don't use frequently you don't use the ng tube or gastrointestinal tube so um, any artificial feed feeding? Tube. She said they use feeding tube. Yes, feeding tube. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I got the message. So if there is no question, uh, yeah. I would like to... Limapa, you, you have any question to discuss? <laughs> yeah, with one question. Uh, the standard yeah. of surgery yeah. is a uh, five centimeter margin with the tumor. Uh, the question I asked in the previous presentation, the uh, surgery, uh, the standard uh, of therapy, uh, Scare is five centimeter margin. So if the margin is not five centimeters, say it is three or four, uh, 2.5 cm, but there is uh, no gross or a microscopic uh, disease in the margin. So should we give the adjuvant radiotherapy to this patient because the margin is not optimum? It is not five cm. Dr. Wang, can you get them to the question? Dr. Wang the uh, margin of the PTV of uh, stomach? Or no, always... margin of resection is not 5 cm. It is, uh, say, 2 or 3 cm, but uh, it uh, should be 5 cm. In our center, uh, maybe uh, five, um, 5 cm is the uh, standard care of the uh, surgery, but uh, some patients, uh, when the location of the stomach, uh, location of the tumor is uh, more proximate to as of age, maybe two or three centimeters is always acceptable. Okay, acceptable. And in that case, uh, you don't recommend any post-operative chemo radiation for this patient as the yeah. margin is not yeah. optimal, no? Yeah, if there is no microscopic or microscopic okay. Okay. Uh, So, so Dr. Wang, Dr. Wang or in, uh, Dr. Wang or uh, Dr. Zhu uh, or Dr. Sh Dr. Shahid Dalong, anyone you can answer this question. This is this question asked by a, a very veteran professor of Bangladesh, Professor Mufajil Hussain, sir. Uh, so what is the long-term side effect of RT uh, of the stomach? Long-term side effect. I think Dr. Wang uh, would be the best person to answer this question. <laughs> Dr. Wang. <laughs> Long-term side effect to to radiotherapy to stomach, uh, maybe uh, uh, some patients will have don't don't have in, enough. Uh, how to say? Uh, maybe maybe nutrition is one of the or always one to one of the uh, important 
long term long term side i think nutritional effect is the main problem uh, besides this if we are going to with imrt i think in the in the recent era we could uh, safely manage the uh, toxicity uh, because uh, we could easily manage the <coughs> organic risk tolerance dose so uh, mofadul hussain sir we could easily handle uh, radiation therapy in stomach in the imrt igrt era sir uh, except the nutritional effects uh, so i think we have discussed all these things so let me summarize today's uh, presentation uh, so it was 2001 so when uh, the intergroup 1006 uh, came with the mcdonald's regime and we we considered that we have got an answer for the stomach cancer after surgery uh, lecovorin 5 if you concurrent with rt rt uh, giving a very good overall survival along with progression free survival uh, but as it is discussed by dr shaida alom uh, that it was uh, with some limitations and in the 2006 Comes with the magic trial with the magic, uh, and since 2006 to 2013, it was considered that the magic trial, that is that ECF three cycles surgery, followed by three cycles chemotherapy, is the standard of care. But as you know, still the stomach cancer outcome was not very convincing. That's why in 2013, uh, probably 2013 is the area. uh of the trials that tried with some radiation therapy but in this 2017 comes with the flot 4 and right now it is considered as the standard of care that the 5 if you leak over in oxaloplatin and docetaxel four cycles after that surgery d2 dissection and four cycles chemotherapy so it is the area of preoperative perioperative chemotherapy uh with the stomach cancer but with the radiation oncologist not Uh, standing behind we are trying to give the radiation therapy new adjuvant here comes with the two trials that the, that the critics two and the top gear probably this will give a answer that the some uh, questions asked by the radiation oncologists that the giving radiation therapy is the adjuvant may be detrimental but why not to give it before the surgery uh, so till that radiation therapy we can give only those with d1 dissection r1 dissection and the one one more important thing that was addressed by dr wang that there is some area even with the d2 dissection that the bulky disease entry nodes that is not very defined so whether we should go with this radiation therapy or not but probably this is the area we can give some radiation therapy so that's all from today's discussion now i would like to request uh, mr sharna to again post the poll to see the response yes sir dr sharna So this time it would be there for 30 minutes, 30 seconds. Thank you, Sharna. Next question. Thank you, thank you, Sharna. Now, uh, as you know, that our today's scientific partner is Sanofi. I would like to request Mr. Naid Abbas to say a few words uh, regarding this program. So, Naid Abbas. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon and assalamualaikum, uh, honorable chairperson, respected speaker, and foreign guests, and most valued invited healthcare professional. Uh, it's my privilege to have been asked for a uh, vote of thanks to this special uh, session. Uh, this is Nahid Hassan, Assistant Manager Oncology on behalf of Sanofi Bangladesh Limited and the entire teams uh, taking gratitude uh, to Oncology Club uh, for giving us the opportunity to be a partner on this today's scientific session. Uh, a big thank to our Honorable Chairperson, Professor Dr. Mohammed M. A. Hai, sir, to inaugurate the session. 
I may like to express uh, my sincere thanks to our today's speaker, uh, Dr. Shahid Alam Lima, as a professor, Department of Radiation Oncology, NICRH Dhaka, uh, for giving an excellent presentation on neo and adjuvant therapy for localized gastric and junctional cancer. Uh, I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for our overseas uh, guest faculties, Dr. Hong Cheng Zhu and uh, Dr. Wang Yang. A radiation oncologist, uh, Shanghai Cancer Center, China, for their uh, explanation and expert opinion. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge our great uh, gratitude to today's moderator, Dr. Mustafa Zishuman, sir, uh, for conducting the session, and Academic Secretary, Dr. A.F.M. Kamaluddin, sir, for his valuable feedback, and Professor Dr. Um, Mufazil Hussain, sir, for his presence. Uh, as you know, uh, from very beginning, uh, Sanofi Bangladesh always patronizing the academic and scientific session for the knowledge development of healthcare professionals. Uh, I also extend my thanks to Onclosy Club uh, for developing the platform, and uh, we are privileged to be the part of this uh, kind of academic uh, session. Uh, with all of your support, hopefully we will collaborate many events in your future. Until then, uh, stay safe. Thank you, sir. So thank you, Mr. Naid Abbas. Now I would like to request our academic secretary, Dr. A.F.M. Kamaluddin. Uh, actually, uh, this program is uh, his brainchild uh, to Dr. A.F.M. Kamaluddin, sir. So thank you, Shumon. Uh, Mustafa Adi Shumon, I want to share a screen and show you a slide of a presentation. And you can just look at the number of machines and then the operation hours is 16 hours from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. And the number of patient, patients per day is 750. So this slide I wanted to show because I had the opportunity to be at the center where from our two faculty to join us as a team member of FNCA. And when this presentation was shown by their head of the department, we were really surprised that how a center like them can treat such a number of patients. And a good number percentage of them were IMRT and DMAT. And then uh, they said that they have their own tricks. And I wish I had the picture to show you that the hundreds and thousands of uh, body frame was hanging and the patients were carrying by their own. So thanks to our two faculty from Shanghai Cancer Center. And I had the opportunity to be at your center and you are doing an unbelievable you. job. I mean, the number of doctors you, and you. the number of patients that you are treating and uh, the, the way you are treating in your center is unbelievable. And we are thankful to you for being with us. And regarding the summary, Shumon, what I want to mention that today FLOT is the gold standard, but in country like us, where we are not getting sometimes a patient fit for FLOT, their Zelox is still a good option for perioperative chemoradiotherapy. And regarding the D1, D2, uh, my take is that when it is a D1, I mean, uh, there is a benefit, but whether all D1 should be given chemoradiation adjuvant is a gray zone. So I think it should be individualized. Even a D1, D1 resection, we need to look at the primary tumor, extent of the disease, resection margin, nodal status, and then we decide whether we add because we know adding adjuvant is a benefit, but also uh, it's a toxicity. But by FLOT or by Zilox, there are many trials, they have shown that there is no inferiority of chemoradio chemoradiotherapy plus versus perioperative chemotherapy. So my suggestion to our colleagues is in our setup, as Shahida was telling, sometimes we are not fortunate to follow any trial. We need to follow our own protocol. So we need to think of our nutritional status of the patients because we take an adventurous step and we cannot finish it. That will be dangerous, Stop, especially in esophageal or gastric cancer. So there we need to be very cautious with uh, what we are thinking and we should be considering flood, but if not, then Zilox. And we should be very cautious about adjuvant chemoradiotherapy. And in stomach, I think it is not for us for new, to try any new adjuvant in uh, stomach. Esophagus, yes. And uh, you, what you mentioned, I think it should be very clearly mentioned that any GE junction or stomach cancer patient, we should ensure the nutrition by feeding tube or gastric or jejunstrate feeding tube. Otherwise, the patient in our setup cannot complete the treatment without interruption. 
and that becomes a very very big challenge so again i want to thank uh, the overseas faculties and definitely i should congratulate our today's presenter who has given a brilliant presentation and uh, how can i finish without congratulating you that you have done a wonderful moderation thank you shumon thank you thank you dr hasan kamaluddin sir shumon is a hard task master he always keep us running <laughs> Uh, thank you, Lima. Now uh, we have already twenty minutes uh, over our uh, scheduled time. Uh, thanks for the discussion. Now I would like to conclude the session. But before that, I would like to hear a few words from our chairperson, Professor M. A. Heiser. Professor, Professor M. A. Heiser, over to you, sir. Thank you, Shohan. Everything is okay. Fine. I'm very happy. Discussions were very nice. Presentation was very good. No, so the discussion was very lively. Not anything from you. So, without any delay, Assalamu alaikum. Allah Hafiz. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, Dr. Wang, Dr. Ju, we'll keep in touch with you. Uh, so, this is our regular program. Uh, every every Sunday this time, we will send you the invitation. If you have time, you can join with us. Uh, so till then, uh, in our uh, we would like to request everyone to join our next session. It would be on chemotherapy, adjuvant, new adjuvant. It will be totally on chemotherapy. It would be presented by Doctor uh, Doctor What is it? I think Asma Siddika. No, 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 no. Asma Abdullah Al Mamun Khan. No, yes, yes. It will be presented by Doctor Abdullah Al Mamun, Assistant Professor, Medical Oncologist. Uh, so it's the hospital. Uh, so till then, uh, stay safe from COVID because it is now uh, raising day by day. So thank you all. Uh, with permission from our Professor Amy Heiser, I will conclude this session. Thank you. Sir, uh, you missed the winner. The quiz winner. Okay, okay. So every day we, we used to miss these things. So can you please mention the name? Yes, sir. Uh, so today's winner is Sharia Rahman. Uh, so Dr. Zhu, so every day from the poll, poll, uh, poll respondent, we pick one winner. So today winner is Sharia Rahman, and she will be awarded with the prize. Mm -hmm. So that that is our uh, program design. So thank you, Dr. Sharia. Uh, so with all, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.